Origin and Legend Obsidian was probably the first glass ever used. In prehistorical times, jewellery, arrowheads and knives were made out from this natural glass. The age of synthetic glass is difficult to establish. The legend mentioned by Pliny the Elder is enlightening although probably fictional. It says that one day during a storm, a Phoenician ship sought shelter along the coast of Palestine. The crew went ashore to cook their meal on the sandy beach, but there were no rocks at hand to support their cooking pots. So the men brought lumps of natron from their ship to serve that purpose. The fire burnt hot and later, as the blaze died down, the men found hardened rivulets of some shining brittle substance among the ashes. Glass was born. To come back to more probable ideas, the oldest objects made of glass by man are at least 5,000 years old. The quality of the Egyptian items which were found shows that it was not the beginning of that craft. The first glasses were certainly accidental glazes on earthenware, cooking pots or jewels. Antique glass was made from sand, mixed with a fusing agent like natron or alkali salts coming from calcination of marine or forest plants. Sometimes a colouring agent was added. Glass blowing by Phoenicians. Other countries throughout the Mediterranean area were making glass. Syria, homeland of the Phoenicians, was a noticeable producer. The Phoenicians were the first to blow glass sometime between 300 and 20 BC. As a result, glass handmaking was completely revolutionized and the glass industry was born. The first glass industry in Rome. At this time, Rome recruited skilled glassmakers from Egypt and Syria, part of the Roman Empire, to create an important glass industry that stretched from Italy to Gaul and the Rhineland. During this period, the most ancient method to make flat glass was invented. Pouring molten glass on a flat surface, covering it with sand to avoid sticking, and rolling out the hot glass. It was a time-consuming method for a rather poor result, as the glass was left almost opaque by the sand on which it had been worked. Method of the crowns, still the Syrians. The collapse of the Western Roman Empire around 500 AD led to the disappearance of the main part of the glass industry, except in the Orient, Constantinople. The production of flat glass using the pouring method was then completely abandoned. Nevertheless, even in the dark years that followed, workshops continued to develop blown hollow glass, thanks to pilgrims who brought secrets from the Syrian glassmakers back to Europe. Around the 7th century, a new method invented by Syrians was imported to produce flat glass. This method, inspired from blowing know-how, was called the crown method. The glassmaker blows a hollow glass globe. A second glass blower fixes a metallic rod to the bottom of the globe. The neck of the globe is split and gradually opens as the glass blower rotates the globe in front of the furnace so that the globe takes the shape of a disc. The disc extended from 20 to 150 centimeters during the 18th century. An inventive Middle Ages. The crown method could only produce small pieces of glass, mainly used for the embellishment of the cathedrals with coloured glass windows. There are some fine examples built during the 12th century at Chartres and Le Mans in France and York in England. Note that for individuals, drinking from a glass was rare at that time. In the 12th and 13th centuries, a new method of producing sheets of glass, called the cylinder method, was developed by French and Roman artisans.
This technique also came from the glass blowing method, but it required more skill from the glassmaker and did not entirely replace the crown method until the 19th century. Today, the artisanal crown and cylinder techniques are still used at the Verrerie de Saint-Just. The Golden Age of Glass, from Venice to Bohemia. From the 12th century, the renewal of the art of glassmaking appeared in Europe more precisely, in Venice. This city possessed everything that was necessary to make glass. The islands on which the city stood were composed of silica-rich sand. Beach forests located on the Istrian peninsula, across the Gulf of Venice, provided the best fuel for the furnaces, fires, and ashes that could be used as fusing agents. As a skillful trader, the city was equipped to ship its production to the richest and most distant markets. To protect the secrets of the Venetian glass workers, the authorities decided that all glass workers should be moved to the island of Murano, where they could be more carefully guarded. It was also a way of limiting the pollution and the risk of fire in the whole city. Despite those precautions, Venetian glassmakers were able to spread their precious knowledge throughout Europe. Glassmakers travelled widely in order to find sufficient resources. Sands of good quality and or large supplies of wood to feed their furnaces. Finally, by the beginning of the 17th century, Venice was rapidly losing its position of world leadership. Bohemian glassworkers developed another crystal glass with a calcium-rich formulation. This composition was more difficult to form but easier to engrave. They invented a new style of glassware and the famous gold ruby glass. France and the invention of table casting. The competition came also from France for the mirror market. The French king Louis XIV asked Colbert to organize many industrial productions, and especially that of mirrors, sold at high prices by the Venetians. Colbert managed to create a mirror manufacturer between 1665 and 1672 by applying the cylinder method from Venetian, then French Norman glassworkers. The mirrors remain small pieces with this technique. In 1688, the invention of casting hot glass on a metal table was introduced, allowing the production of larger mirrors. The ancient Roman method of pouring molten glass onto a flat surface was rediscovered, improved, and has been successfully used in France since the end of the 17th century to produce mirrors. Glass that has been in contact with metal must be polished and smoothed by hand for days and days to make it transparent. In 1695, Louis XIV asked Pontchartrain to carry out the fusion of the different glass companies, cylinder and table casting methods, in the Manufacture des Glaces de France until 1830 and in the Compagnie de Saint-Gobain afterwards. Flint glass, an English revolution. Major innovations were also initiated in England, where the need for large quantities of wood for the Royal Navy had led James I to pass an edict forbidding glassmakers to use wood as fuel for their furnaces. Strangely enough, this rule led to a major revolution in the glassmaking process. A new furnace was developed that could use coal instead of wood. Its temperature could be much higher than before. Around 1675, this new furnace gave birth to England's famous flint glass production. Industrial Revolution – Continuous Melting The 19th century witnessed major developments in glassware. The practice of chemical analysis and glass properties measurement. The invention of a robust temperature measurement. The replacement of fluxes, ashes, by artificial sodium carbonate. 
and the invention by Sir Charles Siemens of a new type of glass furnace combining gasifiers and regenerators to reach higher temperatures and to produce a better glass quality. Thanks to these improvements, a continuous melting furnace could gradually replace the pot furnace in 1920. Forming mechanization. The 19th and 20th centuries were marked by revolutionary technical progress that led to the mass production of glassware. At the end of the 19th century, in France, Boucher, inspired by the glassblowers' gestures and concerned about their working conditions, developed a pneumatic machine to inflate the glass parison in the mould. However, mechanization remained incomplete until the invention of the feeder channel at the beginning of the 20th century in the USA, which allowed continuous forming production. Technological innovation has also largely concerned the drawing of glass fibres, whether by mechanical drawing or by centrifugation. In the mirror glass sector, just after the First World War, the Bichéroux process automatised the table casting method by feeding a laminating unit. In 1920, the first continuous laminating unit appeared at Saint-Gobain, Boudin process. This produced a translucent ribbon of printed glass which then had to be tempered and polished to produce mirror quality. In 1935, the twin grinding process was invented by Pilkington to polish the two faces of the glass ribbon, but the polishing step still required cuting the trays. In 1955, Saint-Gobain invented the Jusin process, allowing the complete automation of the whole mirror glass production. In parallel, for glass windows, some glass stretching processes were developed. In 1903, J. H. Lubbers invented a glass cylinder blowing machine, allowing the production of very large cylinders. In the 1920s, a series of processes made vertical flat glass drawing. First, the society, Libby Owens, with the Foucault and Colburn process. Then the PPG Society with the Pittsburgh process. A glass ribbon was then fed from a bath and stretched upwards under the action of laminating rolls, giving the window glass better quality but still not comparable to mirrors. Float process. The great change came in 1960 with the development of float glass formed by the firm Pilkington in England. In this process, the glass flowing from the melting tank is poured continuously onto a bath of molten tin, forming a layer of uniform thickness. The adoption of this technique immediately replaced three successive, delicate and costly operations – rolling, smoothing and polishing – with a single continuous forming process. Towards new challenges Nowadays, Saint-Gobain, to achieve carbon neutrality, faces two major issues. The removal of CO2 from combustion, either electrical melting or hydrogen combustion. The use of low-carbon raw materials to replace carbonates that have been used for thousands of years and to increase the colour level as much as possible. Note that Saint-Gobain's group was the first actor in the world to achieve a low-carbon production of flat glass. 